Hi everyone, I'm Andy Neal and this is part two of my motion tutorial on exploding text. At this point we have our particles moving evenly towards and away from our camera. I want to have them fly mostly towards camera. Stop playback and go back to your active camera view and make sure that you're at the beginning of your project. Select the explosion group in the layers pane and click the new group button so that a new group is created right above it. Name this group Null. What I'm going to do now is to create a null object or an invisible layer that will affect the movement of the particles. Grab the circle tool again and create another circle. Make it a decent size this time. In the shape tab of the inspector, uncheck the fill and check the outline, but give the circle a decent width. Go to the properties tab and click the reset transformation button to settle it in the center of our canvas. Then twirl open the rotation parameter and change the X rotation to 90 degrees so that the circle is now flat on its back. Go back to perspective view so that you can see the circle as it's cutting through the center of your particles. If you hit Q on the keyboard, you'll activate the 3D transform tool and then you can move the circle away back from the camera so that the edge of the circle is sort of barely touching the particles like this. Now let's add a behavior to our null. Go to Add Behavior, Simulations, Repel. The repel behavior forces other objects or layers to push away from the layer to which it's applied. To get it to work on the particles, go to the Behaviors tab in the inspector and select the Effect drop-down. Choose Specific Objects. Then drag the spark layer into the window. Not the emitter layer, the spark layer. The spark layer represents the particles, so only they are affected by the behavior. If you drag the emitter in there, the entire emitter will push away. If you scrub a few frames into your project, you can see the effect working. Let's, uh, let's adjust this a bit. First of all, increase the strength to about 70. This is going to push the particles pretty hard. But the particles only seem to be pushing side to side and not at all towards camera. Click the Z-axis button in the behavior so that the particles will be pushed in Z-space as well. Then drop the influence to about 350 pixels and make the drag 1. What this does is slow down the particles as they leave the area of influence that we adjusted above. One last thing that we can do to give the illusion of the text exploding from the center is to then animate the null. With the null shape selected, go up to Add Behavior, Basic Motion, Throw. Go to the Behaviors tab and twirl open the Throw Velocity. Change the Z Velocity to about 200 so that the null moves towards camera. Now you can see the particles push away from the null as it moves, giving us that really cool explodey effect. Go ahead and hit Control A to go back to your active camera and turn off the null layer. There's one last bit to our animation. The transition between the normal text and the exploding text. For this, I want to have the text begin to glow before exploding. I can get a nice glow with the bloom filter, but I need to add the filter to the group that contains the text, not the text itself. The problem with adding the bloom filter to the text is that the text is right now being used as the shape for the particle emitter. If you add a glow or other filter onto the text, it affects the shape and then the particles no longer fit in the shape of the text the way that they should. We can get around that by adding the filter to the group instead. So we have a nice white glow around our text now. But what I want is a colored glow, like blue or something something to match the particles that we created. That's pretty easy. All you have to do is change the color of the text. Select the text and go to the text tab of the inspector. Click on the color button and drag around in the color wheel until you get a glow that sort of looks like what you did with the particles. Now that we have a glow, we need to reposition our exploding particles. Move the playhead to about 30 frames in. Then select the explosion group and the null group because that's part of the animation as well. Hit shift left bracket 
to shift these two layers to the position of the playhead. You can double check their positions by opening up the timing pane if you want. The shortcut is F6 on the keyboard. And there you can see that now the beginning of the emitter layer and the null layer, they don't start until uh, 30 frames in. Okay, that all looks correct. Hit F6 to close the timing pane. The next step is to ramp up our bloom effect so that it looks like our text is reaching critical mass. Keep the playhead on the 30 frame mark and select the bloom filter or the text group, either one. Go to the filters tab and hit A on the keyboard to turn on keyframe recording. Crank the amount all the way up and the brightness nearly all the way up and then lower the threshold a little so that the glow becomes a little bit more white than before. Turn off the record keyframes button and take a look at the text. Okay, good. To finish off the effect, I'll need to fade the original text out. Make sure that the text group is selected and advance to frame 35 in your timeline and hit O on the keyboard to trim the text to that point. Then go up to Add Behavior, Basic Motion, Fade In, Fade Out. In the Behaviors tab, make the Fade In 0 and the Fade Out 5 frames. So basically, the text begins to fade out as soon as the emitter appears. Select the emitter again, and in the emitter tab, it's time to add back the particles for the full effect. I'm going to put about 5,000 particles in there. It may take a moment for motion to draw them all, but you should be able to make out the look of the text, especially if you're on the first frame of the emitter, frame 30. Now hit Command R on the keyboard to do a RAM preview, and let's see how it looks. A strange side effect that I've noticed is that if you have the emitter selected in the layers pane, or even if the, you have the group selected that contains it, the animation won't play back at full speed, even after it's rendered into RAM. To fix that, just click in an empty space in the layers pane to deselect all the layers, and it should play fine. And there you have it, exploding text. You may want to play around with the timing or the number of particles, but I kind of like it the way it looks. I'm Andy Neal, and this has been a Motion Quick Tip.